Things like Rob Chapman. I'm the captain. Welcome How are you all today? And the tennis store, Kurt UK, the home of beautiful, expensive guitars. Expensive. And very <laughs> affordable ones. Sorry, yes. totally forgot what video we were doing there. Yes, welcome to the ultimate. Uh, I mean the ultimate. Can we find the um, thing, the blip? Blip. blip. It's right next to your coffee cup, Rob. So uh, I'm not qualified to know where the... Uh... It's fine. Blip. So we thought we'd do the ultimate um, most expensive versus most affordable guitar challenge. Uh, and we chose uh, that brilliant song by Richie Sambora, Made in America, to kick off this jam Which I, with. He definitely wrote that. He de it was, definitely wasn't taken from someone else. Well, it's, it, basically, it's the, it's the uh, triad of beauty chords, isn't it? If you go G, C, D, you can play everything and anything, almost. Can you? Um, made in America because the three brands that we've chosen are all based in America. Land of the free. Um, starting with PRS. We've been into the store and with no, you know, personal subjectivity or anything. It's simply what's the dearest, what's the cheapest. I the can't end. believe that's the cheapest. This is the standard series, which is an Indonesian guitar by Paul Reed Smith. Uh, made in the style of the Custom 24. There are other shapes available. What does it say on the back of the headstock, Lee? It says, built by P.T. Wildwood in Indonesia under exclusive license for PRS Guitars, CEIE 01837. Good factory. Good factory. Um, and basically, it's a plain mahogany guitar, so there's no flame top on it, which is how it's a bit more affordable. But other than that, it's pretty much uh, the same spec that you'd get on a regular uh, Custom 24, you know, with the two humbuckers, the trem system, coil tapping, a uh, three-way switch. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to say rosewood fingerboard, but I don't know. A dark wood of, of uh, some descent. It may well be rosewood, but a lot of manufacturers are moving away from rosewood recently. Well, if it's recently. from Indonesia, it's more than likely to be Macassan ebony. Right. Which looks just um, like that wood. But this guitar will set you back the princely, princely? The princely sum <laughs> of £475. So that, it actually is the most expensive of our affordable guitars. But how does it feel to play? It feels good. It, it feels a little bit like... Um, kind of a little bit like I'm fighting it a bit you know right. it's not got that like oh i've owned this guitar forever instant fluidity amazingness but it sounds fantastic i was really happy with some of the sounds in there it's staying in tune it looks cool so what's not to you know tick 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 um <laughs> and it's a sensible price albeit that it's maybe not it's nothing like as beginnery money as the other two guitars i wonder will there be a guitar we don't like in this uh in this video uh There'll be, I suspect, three guitars that we like more than three other guitars, but probably that'll right. be something to do with the multiple of ten times price factor. Well, one of the guitars that we definitely will like is this McCarty 594 Wood Library, which I made an immediate beeline for when we entered the expensive special room at Anderton's here. It's got this ridiculous uh, quilted maple cap. You can see it all through that reveal binding. It's got your full three to four knobs, all of them attached. Um, I really like the way that they attach it here. You just hook it through and thread it in, and then of course it's all like lovely and exposed gears and things there. A bit like an expensive watch that you'd never wear on your wrist because it would really hurt. And um, yeah, maple and mahogany. Two kun, kind, two kuns. You don't wear a watch, do you? No, I'll tell you two good reasons why. Go on, why? Okay, I have a special power. What, you just know what the time is? I that always, is a special power. I, I, I'm, I'm, this is absolutely the lord? truth. No, I'm not a time lord. That's uh, Joss's right hand is a time lord. <laughs> I, uh, two reasons I don't wear a watch. First reason is I'm way too hairy, and when I grew up as a kid and was told to wear a watch, the strap would always, on those little digital watches with robot games and stuff, yeah. would always pull out my wrist hairs, ow, ow. and they really, really hurt. The second thing is, if I tell myself to wake up at a particular time, I always, and I mean always, wake up at that time. Without fail, Always have done. You've it's got really strange. A, a very enviable special power, which is that literally when you go to sleep, you just go to bed and go and go to sleep, and like a second later, so, you are asleep. Now the it's viewers, so annoying. And the viewers Obviously, may may question how I know that. Right. Well, they also may question that that's because I'm spooning him at the time. Going, oh, <laughs> <laughs> not really. Go to sleep. <laughs> no, but I I can sleep on a countdown. Yeah. I can literally go five, four, three, two, one, and be asleep. 
I've been able to do that for the last sort of, 20, 30 years. It's crazy. Mad. As opposed to insomniac Lee that stays awake all night worrying it's about whether I'm going to sell enough guitars the following day to pay everyone's wages at Anderton's. It's all due to the <laughs> lifetime of internal <laughs> Chinese martial arts and an acupuncturist father. Wow. Yes. So, so anyway, uh, this is beautiful. I'd love to own yeah. it. Not the biggest fan of the colour. If well, that was a Blue Mateo and, and a natural black. Now, when we, we did a recent PRS event here and uh, we bought, oh, a few, probably six or seven wood library guitars. And, and in the PRS range, it goes, the, 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 you've got the S2 line, which is the most affordable American stuff. You've got the core line, which is the stuff that goes back to the 80s and is the sort of, I guess, if you said PRS America, that's what you would think of. Um, then you've got Wood Library, which is essentially them kind of doing relatively limited runs of guitars that are some twist that makes them slightly unique and using all of the like the wood that they like the best from what they've got. And then you've got Private Stock, which is literally built one guitar at a time, completely unique to what you want it. So this is Wood Library. Yeah, and this me... is a nitro cellulose finish yes. on the guitar. And we all reckon, everyone that's played that, reckons there's something about the very, very thin nitro finish they put in there, as opposed to the slightly more gloopy um, lacquer that goes on the shiny ones, that just like is you, making the guitar Just like give more. you the science. If you want, or you could just play, or both. I'll give you the science really quickly. Go on then. From having spoken to many pickup companies, mm -hmm and having spoken to many electronics and audio engineers, they all say the consensus is that as a physics system, everything vibrates yeah. and the strings speak to the pickups, the frequencies that are left. And some frequencies are soaked up by the wood and by the lacquer and the metals and everything it touches. And the remaining frequencies are passed through the pickups to the amplifier. So it's almost the reverse of what people think. Yeah. And so different kinds of lacquers make a big difference yeah. because it cover, it's like the skin of the guitar, it's covering everything, isn't it? It's terribly, I, mem I do remember Paul Reed Smith trying to explain that once, that uh, the electric guitar as a system is not about adding anything, it's about what it's you subtractive. take away. Yeah, and so people go, know. oh, maple cap makes things brighter. What it's actually doing is it's absorbing low frequencies and letting high frequencies out. Yeah. That's what it is. Anyway, anyway. let's... <laughs> Uh, tone wood, tone wood, tone wood, tone wood. Let's take a listen to some tones yes. from this tone wood structure. <laughs> one of the best sounding guitars I've ever played. <laughs> I, we, we honestly, the general consensus when we did our PRS Roadshow was mixed opinion on the look. You know, some people really digged it and some people didn't. And everyone just went, there's something special about that guitar and the way it plays. It's just awesome. I own uh, a wood library. Do you? Is yours wood library? I bought yeah, one no, for my right. son. I'm trying remember? To, yes, I, I do remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is, uh, for, for, it, for as far as I'm concerned, in the top five sounding guitars I've ever played in my yeah. life, and this is for sure up there in the top five. I'm just saying right now. Let's swap it, whatever, guitars. Whatever, whoever I... buys this, and it's 18250453, you bought one of the best sounding guitars yeah. I've ever played. So now this guitar, let's swap over a second, because uh, I think what we should try and conclude between all three of these is, is the price multiplier between what the cheapest one is and what the dearest one is well, that's 5K, somehow yeah? just viable. So this is more, this is about 11 times the price of this one. Yeah, okay, so we'll do the same thing.
I wonder if my rig is just really good today. It's great. Sound. I'm using the uh, Rob Chapman signature Titan pedal. From um, uh, Mythos. Yes, from Mythos. I'm using the V30 Mark II, and it's a really good sounding rig. I'm going to say that to me sounded better. Yeah. And it played better. Yeah. But like 20% more. Yeah. Not like 60% more. Yep. This still sounds hella good. Did you find... I mean, it's interesting, because when, you, when you're playing a note and it feels like it wants to sustain, you don't feel the need to leave that note. Whereas I think subconsciously, when you're playing that guitar and you're doing it and you can feel it not quite sustaining as much, you play a different lick so that you kind of don't dwell on any one note any longer. Yeah. So it's not necessarily like a... It's not necessarily I, as obvious that... The, the two guitars are I'll that I'll give you a, a good analogy to that. So mm. I always say it's a bit like talking through your hand. Mm -hmm. That that guitar is happy to say words. This guitar wants to say sentences. This guitar wants to say sentences, or this. Guitar no, that one's to... happy to say words. It's like F you, or F <laughs> this one's like. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, I, I don't really understand that analogy, and all of it would because have been that one's happy as well. Because this one, if you say a word, it stays on the word. It's just the word. It's just a simple Let's see. thing. Let's see. Let's Play see. Play it, Lou. It's really hard, isn't it? it uh, the, 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 the price difference is more easy to justify in the feel than it is in the tone. Well, feel and look. And, and, and look. It's, yes, it is a work of art, these things. You, yeah, know, you own it, one it because they look beautiful too. It feel nice to play, this one. So but look, you could take this and you could sand the neck down and you could, you could set it up for hours and play yeah. it in and you could do all sorts of things and it would end up feeling Perfect, yeah. if you I, wanted it to. I mean, there is an element of me that says, look, hats off to PRS, because PRS have never gone, you know what, we want a piece of that £150 guitar action because we're going to sell billions of guitars. They've always kind of gone, look, what's the lowest price that we think we can make a great guitar like that. for? Yeah. And that's why the um, standard series. So the, as I said, this is 475 and that's the cheapest guitar that you can buy by PRS. So it's probably not a guitar, unless you're very, very <coughs> lucky, that you're going to learn to play on, uh, which leads me nicely onto the next part of our uh, review, which where the two, the Epiphone and the Squire we've got, absolutely are the kind of guitars that most of you or most of us will have learned to play on. So just here we go. Just because it's important to say negatives as well as pluses, yeah. just visually doesn't make any difference to the feel, but you can just see there's a little bit of untidy yeah. fret binding. Yeah. You know, you see some of the sort of, there's a tiny, tiny amount of inconsistency in, in the build quality. But you know what? I'd tour that. Yeah. I'd take this on tour yeah. and play it on yeah. tour and I'd be happy with it. And I'd, I'd trust it would do a good yeah. job. Well, if you take someone like Mark Holcomb, or who else? Chris Robertson from Blackstone Cherry. You know, they all have um, American and uh, Far Eastern versions of their signature guitars. Yeah, and they will all tour. Typically speaking, the Far Eastern ones, just because I guess the issue is if you lose one or it gets smashed up in, you, just, you don't care so much if it's a Far Eastern right. one, do you? Whereas you sort of be gutted if it's a, a super expensive <coughs> American one. Which no, one, Natalie? Fender. Okay, Fender. The price multiplication of these two is <laughs> 25 times, I think. And that's probably not necessarily because this is so expensive. It's just that this is so ridiculously cheap. Sorry about all the plastic over the scratch plate, but I should probably have pulled that off. Squire Bullet is gonna cost you, with a, with a hard tail, it's gonna cost you 115 pounds. Absolutely the most insane value guitar that I think you can buy in the world, but certainly what you can buy from Anderton's. And this is a custom shop 59 reissue Strat that Pete Honore and I specced up and did a run of 
different colors and stuff like that. And that is 3,700 pounds. <coughs> Jumbo chubby neck. It's, yes, it is a, it is a John English custom carved neck. Uh, anyway, you can read more about that on our website. But let's, uh, let's have a little jam. guitars leave me speechless right. because I just think and yet you speak and yet I speak so it's a lie they don't leave me speechless <laughs> at all but I sort of sit here thinking I just think of all the <coughs> all the crap that I've probably spent 115 pounds on I don't know it could be a meal a shirt you know like a designer <laughs> shirt or <coughs> uh, yeah like you say a nice restaurant for yeah. two people or, you know, I don't know, like a couple of PlayStation games. A, mo a mobile phone contract in like two months costs what one of these guitars costs. Yeah. And it's, I don't really know. I mean, again, would it stand up to the rigors of touring? I don't know. I mean, if you were constantly changing the humidity and temperature of the neck, maybe it would be difficult to keep it going. <laughs> Absolutely, the machine heads here, I know in a year or two's time, will start to probably be a bit problematic. It doesn't have a trem system on it, which is kind of a good thing, really, because it just means there's nothing to go. I think cheap trem systems are pretty terrible normally, so it's quite good to have the hardtail. I'm obviously using a good, you know, a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. It's not the, like the 50 pound amp yeah, yeah. that you'd get in a, in a guitar <coughs> pack, and that's a big reason why it sounds good. But look, that has stayed in tune, man. It goes. It's got all the strat tones. I mean, it, and it plays nice, you know, it's like, so I, I think this is, you know, strats in particular probably have the, the hardest of all the guitars to justify the price difference. Yeah. S not because the good ones aren't great, but just because the cheap ones are, are great. Yeah, it's you know? true, it's really but, true. So tell us about your, well, what do you like? <clears throat> this one took a long time to set up and get the way that I wanted it, because it came with a really, really high action. But I suppose that's just to be expected when you've got, you know, guitars being shipped across and sort of, we just pulled it out. So I had to adjust the trem and the action and, you know, I mean, we restrung a lot of these guitars yep. because what we discovered is that the really expensive ones, a lot of people play them a lot yep. and then they get really rusted. But it's got an undeniably beautiful tone. Yeah. So it does a thing. <laughs> Nothing sounds like a strat. Other no, it than a strat, sounds it's just like. Ooh. 
sounds beautiful. I love it. For me, it doesn't play very easily. It's got a, a big old fat neck, which is just it's a personal It's thing. supposed to have, in fairness. But, uh, and um, the action is still quite high to allow it to fret, but it's a compromise between incredible tones, not necessarily great playability for me as a player. See, these... But it may well be that Lee Goes Art plays great. Yeah, I mean, and, and although, again, I've, I've sort of... What's the right word? What, 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 what's the word when you, when, you, when you say lots of lovely things about something? Evangelize or whatever about the, the Bullet series strats. It's not the kind of guitar that you're going to go, that's it, I'm done now, I'll never ever need to buy another strat, you know, or another guitar. It's just, in my opinion, a fantastic place to start. I should say on this point, a slightly more serious point, um, so, some of the stuff that I've been doing recently is looking at bringing in a, a, a more of an own brand guitar into Anderton's or, or a non-famous guitar brand. Not because I think we can do anything better than Squire or Epiphone or anything like that, but just because I've seen some guitars out there, like some of these, and I don't, I'm not gonna badmouth other retailers or whatever, but certainly like supermarket guitars and other big retailers who do do their own brand. I've tried some stuff recently where they'll bundle everything, like guitar amp, guitar, everything in for like 99 pounds, and it's like, there you go. And we bought some to kind of see how good they were. And it's just like, oh man, it's so bad. <laughs> And I, I wish you could tell us who it is, though. It, it was... Well, if you see a guitar amp and right, a guitar right. for £99, right, to be honest with you, it's... <clears throat> any but, I mean, what do you expect? But the problem is, I think, is that is that parents will have young children that want to learn to play the guitar, and they'll go, I don't know if it's going to be a five-minute wonder or if it's going to be something going to stick out. So, obviously, you know, I'm just going to go on the internet and see... And they go, oh, look, there's one. It's £99. to get everything. Yeah, That's yeah. what we'll buy, you know, little Johnny, Johnny or little Jane for his or her birthday, and then you sort of go, is there any, I mean, I, I, I bet you it's, if that child then three months down the line just gives up, I think part of the reason will just be because the you thing You bought them a problem to deal just, with. Yeah, it just doesn't stay in tune and the thing doesn't feel very nice to play and it doesn't sound very good. And what I'm beginning to find with some of this other, like, again, it's own brand stuff that we're looking at. If I just go a little bit up, like even just go like 120 or 130 or something like yeah. that, you get a lot extra. Yeah. And so I think we're going to try and do something in time for Christmas this year, which seems like a long way away, but those are the kind of lead times, where we'll actually go, look, absolutely there's squires and epiphones and everything. You and mean like do an Anderton's thing. caster? I won't call it an Anderton's caster, but it'll be a brand that... that maybe just Anderton's and one or two other people sell or something, but it'll be something where we've been involved in picking and choosing and specking it. Right. But just purely and simply to try and go to people, look, honestly, if it's got our name on it and our sort of seal of approval, it will be okay. Uh, and hopefully people will go, oh, that's, anyway, whatever. Let's go back to this guitar, which I, See, that, that to me instantly is tighter and more bell-like. Uh... See, I would say there's more of a dis difference in the tone between that and that than there was on, on the PRS for me. Again, I do love this guitar, whether or not... <sighs> so difficult, isn't it? Whereabouts well, on the curve with fenders, you kind of hit that, where do you get your, the biggest bang for your buck? I think it's quite low. I think it's five to 800 pounds or something on fender stuff where, you, you know, and anything beyond that, you begin to sort of go, it's tough to justify the price difference. But as a guitar to aspire to owning, this is 
This oh, is, it looks stunning me, and it sounds amazing. Yeah. Let's listen to this. <laughs> Honestly, if you know someone that wants to learn to play the guitar, squire bullet strat and spend 70, 80 pounds on the amplifier. Again, avoid the mega, mega, mega cheap stuff if you can. So about 200 pounds. Change the tuners and change the pickups. No, just play that until the guitar starts to fall apart and then buy something else. Because it'll be like three, four years but you, down but the you line. But you could, you could change the tuners and change the pickups and... And then, then it just costs you three times what the guitar costs to do that. But well, uh, depends on the pickups and tuners. Yeah, I personally, I would just go. That's the guitar for me. Um, play it until you feel like you're ready to go. I'm in for a hundred quid. Exactly. Anyway, look. Lastly, in our little trilogy of ultimate most expensive versus cheapest, pitches a hundred and seventy pound Epiphone Les Paul Studio LT versus a. Five and a half thousand pound <laughs> 59 Les Paul reissue from so, the Blues Master. Let me get that right. This is more expensive than that PRS. That's about the same, I think. Wasn't the PRS 5.5? Five, five? No, was it 5.1? 5.2? 5.1. Five, one, five, one, five, one. So, yeah, little, it's more expensive then. So, that'll be the dearest one of, of the whole. Even though it's a bit rusty, look. Yeah, it's intentionally rusty, though, ah. Rob, because that's the VOS finish. Uh, let's play anyway before we start. Um, Wait, let me check. Casting it. dispersions.
So oh. I, I needed to elevate it because I didn't have a strap and it was a bit, you know. So, <gasps> I will start with this. This is called the Epiphone Studio LT. It is, if Rob flips his guitar around, huh? uh, you'll know that the proper way to make a Les Paul is to glue the neck into the body um, and... Leave a little bookshelf. Yeah, and basically it's what's called a set neck. Go, now the set fixer. neck is a more affor a more expensive guitar design than the bolt-on neck that you see on a, on a Strat. So in order to make a Les Paul, an Epiphone Les Paul more affordable, or at least to make the Studio LT more affordable, this is a bolt-on neck version. So it's kind of not, apart from the shape, it's not really the true essence of a Les Paul, but it is um, the right shape. It's got the two humbucking pickups on it. It's got the right kind of bridge and tail piece, same scale length. So it's kind of... You know, it's Les Paul. You can make S. believe it's a Les Paul. Yeah, and a little bit like the PRS, I'm liking the sound. Uh, I didn't, you know, it's got, it's fat and it's juicy and it's got some sustain there. Um, it's tough to play. You know, it's it's not, or tougher to play. Uh, ironically, out of the three, and we'll do a roundup, I guess, at the end, but out of the three, I found the Squire one the easiest to play, which is ironic as it's the cheapest one. Um, but if you're a, a sort of a budding Slash fan and it's, you know, Slash was the, the, the guy that made you want to learn to play the guitar, then I'm guessing this is what you'd rather have, you know, kicking around in your bedroom right. than one of these. And it's not dissimilar money. It's like we're up at like 170 now as opposed to like 115 or whatever. Well, that was. have you played this Les Paul? I expect I probably have. I own a very similar Les Paul to that. It is my favourite guitar, so I will probably like it. But it's really good. It's butter, is yeah, it? It's, really it's just good. like, yeah. Aww. yeah. I mean, it needs another like mil or and a half of, of net relief, um, but it's really good. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it just plays like. See, I, I think Gibson, of all the guitar brands that we do, is the one where it's easiest to justify the most expensive ones. And I don't mean that as in because they're somehow better than any other guitar. Is it because you your wife has money? heard of Gibson? No, it's be what I mean is the the difference in feel and tone and build and everything between the cheap ones and the dear ones yeah. is greatest on Gibson right. than it is on any of the other brands. Maybe that's a negative. Well, maybe, maybe what we're saying is the cheap stuff's not good enough. You know what? As it happens, mm. we know a guy actually looking for a Les Paul. Who? Rabir. No, Rabir no, he, he said he doesn't he wants, want a Les Paul. No, he's, 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 he wants to buy a really? Les Paul at some point. Yeah, he's, I he thought really... he was just like died in the world, didn't like Les Pauls. Man. No, 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 he really wants to buy a Les Paul. I think Rabir. Finally, Rabir's, is I... that something to do? Are you 30 or something this year, Rabir? Are you finally... 32 weeks ago. Right, so you're finally so, growing up. Is that I what you're basically say, saying? Yes. Since this is one of the nicest <laughs> Les Pauls I've played, I think Bish come and play it. I agree. Can I, can, let me play it though, because I think you should play this one. All right, and then we'll get Beer out. Although, you, no, do you know what? I'm sorry, I totally, you haven't really spoken of that at all yet all you right. just sort of uh, you know it's... what what is it about it that you're going like this is fat Out of, like there's about two notes there, and it was it was Billy Gibbons just saying. <laughs> well, that's a surprise. <laughs> well, it's it's and a, a Les Paul. You no no other guitar sounds like a Les Paul. No, it's, no, it's been copied right. a billion times. Yeah, and absolutely everything's subjective. So you'll go, I prefer the feel or the sound of yeah. any other number of guitars. It's it all just fine. needs like for me personally, a tiny bit of neck relief and a very slightly higher action, and then ten to fifty twos, and that's the Les Paul. Yeah, I mean, I like them. I like them how they are, but they, everybody's got their own like personal preference. I like to do that. But let me play let, that let one. Then, on that. Is, me... it, is it true that, would it be fair to say that Gibson made the flame top desirable? I mean, did anybody before Gibson put flame top bursts on their guitars do a flame top burst? 
I don't know whether Rickenbacker did. I don't. Rickenbacker have never put like maple tops on their guitars, as far as I'm aware. I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of, you know, when you see any modern guitar and it's got a beautiful burst on it and it's beautifully flaming, yeah. and I think it's, you know, it's just hats off this water. Well, someone, I can, I can hear that. Can you hear the comment section? What, going, telling just, me I'm yeah. wrong? Actually, in 1947, there was a flame. Would it have been uh, Gretsch? I don't think so. Yeah, Anybody some... in the room think of a, of a, of a, Guitar from the fifties that did the flame top thing before. I don't Gibson know. Did. We'll, we'll, we will but, find uh, out. Let me uh, let me just tune this. You're right. I would have the neck. I would have the uh, action a little higher on this guitar. Yeah. But that's you know depends depends on as the guitar player, doesn't it? Well, can, can you can you raise the action for for for? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say also as well, if you're thinking about buying a guitar, uh, Andertons do this thing called the Blues Master, which is unique to Andertons, which is basically a completely, uh, really not changed very much about the 58 or the 59, except for a couple of things. So the first thing is, 58 is normally synonymous with a fatter neck and a plainer top, and a 59 is normally synonymous with a thinner neck and a flamey top. And all we've done is flipped some of those options. So you can now have a plain top or a flame top uh -huh. with a thinner neck. And on conversely, you can have a plain top or a flame top with a fatter neck. Right. So you, you can have either or. Um, and we handpick the tops. So Gibson send us photographs of all the pieces of maple they've got before they're made into guitars. And we go, oh, that'll be a nice one. That'll be a nice one. So we do all that. So they should be all pretty looking. We specifically uh, picked pickups from our favorite sounding collector's choice guitars to, to, to put in them so that, again, just to be our own little twist. And we do the, the Peter Green thing, nice. uh, which means this second volume control pops out ooh, like this. And what it does is it reverses the phase of the neck pickup. So when you're in your middle position, it sounds a bit more stratty. And that's a blues master feature, which is an Anderton's thing. So if you like that, um, I like to give do that. the guys a call so, here. So Lee, while I'm treating mm. myself to this, mm. why don't you just very slightly tweak that action so that Rabia can have a better experience I'll when he has it. a little chop on it. I'll do it. it. I'll do and, it. Uh, and I'll have a little chop on this. This. <laughs> So the thing about this guitar is it is, it fights you. I'll give you the negatives. It fights you, it's hard to play. The frets, they're sticking out. You can feel the frets. It's, um, but you know what? It sounds good. And when you start playing and stop being picky, it, it plays good. So you end up going, well, it's just kind of all right, you know? It yep. sounds better than it plays, 
for yep. sure. Yeah. Which I, I'm seeing is is quite quite a a thing in this. But um, again, not not a lot you couldn't just solve with a little file and a half an hour setup. And um, you know things like whoops, things like this isn't screwed in, and oh, is it not? No, and um, it just it just needs a bit of love and attention. But that's what you get. I'm not saying it's a project guitar. I'm just saying this could be made 15% better with a half an hour of just standard yeah. setup time. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, so to to sort of if you could walk out the room with one of the expensive ones and yeah. one of the cheap ones. What would you do? 100% the PRS, because it's one of the best guitars the ex I've, I've, the expensive ever, PRS. Oh, yep. I've ever yep. heard in my life. Yep. And the cheap one would be the Strat. Yeah, well, I'm going to say, same with you, the cheap one, I'd, but run, obviously I'd take you're the Strat, the Les Paul. and I would take the Les Paul. 100% you would. Uh, and I will say, it's a close match between the Les Paul and the PRS, but the PRS really was one of the best guitars I've ever heard. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's, it's kind of like a, hopefully, a slightly more informative uh, cheap versus expensive video yeah. rather than just I a novelty they, sort of shootout. I hope you've drunk enough water uh, in it and got some more to take away food while you watch this because so, this has been like an hour long I know. So megathon. As a, as a final treat for those of you that have yeah. stayed to the end, uh, let's get Rabir Massad in to plug this guitar in through either rig that he would like. I suspect he'll go with Rob's rig uh, to see whether or not this Les Paul is good enough. <laughs> Good. Just quickly before we've forgotten that tone, just do the same on that because it's like you're totally oh, well, right. If you've got will five sound grand, you've got twenty five percent better. Sorry, that's just going to sound twenty five. I don't think it will, but, no, but you know, well. whatever. This one sounds more like a Les Paul. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just saying yeah. because it is a Les Paul. What do you think of the Les Paul? It's, you, it's nice. You were sounding it's really good. sick on this guitar. <laughs> uh, you got a little like, don't buy it, Rabir. <laughs> buy it, Rabir. <laughs> buy it, Rabir. <laughs> it's good, but I won't have that one. Right. What? Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.